Hey everybody, it's Dowden, and in this video, we're going to be looking at something called velocity tracking. It's something that you can use to your advantage by changing different parameters in your sounds based on how hard you're playing your keyboard or you've set up your MIDI information inside of your DAW. Whether you're playing live, recording live, or just drawing in your own MIDI information, I'll show you a few things that you can do to really elevate your tracks to be much more interesting on a subtle or a not so subtle level, depending on your style. Let's go ahead and jump into it. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe with notifications on so you can get more videos like this one. So the example that I'm gonna use is going to be a progressive house track that I'm writing. You can use this with any genre, any style, and you can use this with any synth as long as it has velocity tracking in it. I will be using Serum for this, but at the end of the video, I'll show you how to do the techniques that you'll learn as well in Wavetable. So I'll let you take a listen to the loop first. Now I'm just gonna slow the kick and the bass. And I'm gonna take the sub off for the example as well. What we're really listening for is that the bass is, it's a cool bass line, it's just a bit repetitive. Um, obviously being a bass line, you kind of want it to be repetitive, but we can make it even more interesting by going in and changing the parameters of that sound every single time that it hits. And it doesn't have to be excessive, it can just be pretty slight, but it's going to trick the ear into listening for more. It's going to give us a bit of question as to what the sound is actually going to do next, and it's going to be a little bit more interesting. You can use this on any synth that has velocity tracking ability, but I'm going to just open up Serum here. You can see over here I have this, it says VLO for velocity, and it's the velocity tracking. So if I grab this, these arrows here and drag and drop it onto any parameter inside of Serum, then I can adjust that parameter based on the velocity reading that Ableton is sending through the MIDI information to that VST, to that synth. In other words, how hard I'm playing the keys on my keyboard or the level of velocity that the MIDI information says in my piano roll is going to adjust parameters inside my synth. To really simplify that, we can take a look at the velocity itself. So we just have velocity here. I scoot myself up. Whoop. You can see here the amount of velocity. Its velocity is about 100 right here, but the velocity is going to be at about 100 for each of these. So if I play this, it's just going to be repeating the same. And if we actually open up the VST, we can see this green dot is the amount of velocity. So right here is 100. And if I open up the piano roll again and start to move, you know, if I grab all these notes and bring them down, you're going to see that green go down as well. So why is this important? Why do we need to know that? Well, if we grab this velocity, and throw it on the cutoff. Now we can say that when this, wherever this green button is equal to the amount of velocity, wherever that is on the slope, change the cutoff. So if we put it up just a little bit, bring our velocity down, you can hear the cutoff a little bit quieter. If we bring it back up, you'll hear the cutoff start to open up. Okay, so let's move it even higher now, make it a little bit more obvious. That's pretty cool. And we can put this on a bunch of different parameters. We can put this on our wavetable position, put this on the drive a little bit. We can put this a tiny bit on the resonance. Try it one more time. So the harder we hit the notes on the keyboard, the more it's gonna open that cutoff. This could be really advantageous because we can Put this on just a little bit or a lot if you prefer, but a little bit and just start to change the velocity of our notes. So I'll change this one down here, put this one up here, a little schmiggle, schmiggle over here, a little bit down there. Let's do a lot up here. It's a little crazy up here. And down here, and a lot up here, and far down there. Okay, and now we can take a listen to the difference that the velocity is gonna make. So this side will be, uh, let's change the color to pink. This will be the side that has the different velocities, and this side will have the stagnant velocities that are going to remain the same. And let's take a listen to how interesting it is now. Okay, it's, it's definitely different, but it could be a little bit more different. So let's go ahead and let's increase the slope a little bit. So we grab this, we can actually watch. Let's watch one more time. 
you can see that green little dot jumping up and down. The highest point of the velocity now is going to push that knob all the way up to that blue spot in our parameter change, but let's bring this curve down a little bit. So now anything that's below the halfway point is going to be pretty uh, you know, turned down with the, the cutoff, but anything above the 50% really steeply climbs up. And let's listen again. Change it a little bit more. Let's turn it up even more on the knob here. So the velocity is going to be turning up the cutoff even more. So definitely more interesting in the pink MIDI clip than the blue. Okay, now we know that it's definitely doing a lot. I don't want it that obvious. I'm gonna just tone it down just a slight bit. I mean, we could go crazy. We could really open this up. We could push these really high and really low to make a really interesting sound. And then you could, you know, duplicate this and, and change each of your velocities so that each of your clips are different or some of the clips are different. But why don't we make it even easier on ourselves and use a tool that can do this for us? Let's grab the velocity tool. It's a MIDI effect. And I'm going to drag and drop that onto the bass accent. So I'm going to take this original bass line here, the one that's just a completely stagnant, repetitive velocity. They're all sitting at 100. I'm going to replace the other MIDI clip that we have with the different velocities. I'm going to change that out with this one with the consistent velocity. And then I'm going to grab the velocity tool. I'm going to say that I want some randomness. So I'm going to push this randomness knob up. And let's go to about 20. And what it's doing is it's going to change the velocity notes and the MIDI information. So it's going to automatically change randomly these notes. Let's go ahead and take a listen with Serum on. We can watch the green and see what's happening. So we know it's working. We have the velocity the same, but it's changing inside here because we're telling Ableton that it is going to be random by using the velocity tool. If we want to control this even more, we can actually adjust the out high and out low. So the out high I'll bring down and let's bring the out low up quite a bit. Let's say we want some variation, but we don't want that really high cutoff. We don't want that really low cutoff. So we can just change that here. And it will only hit up to 89 and as low as 27. Make that lower. Or we can go all the way up. And that's going to make our baseline quite interesting compared to what it was before. You can definitely overdo this by, you know, what we had before by really pushing the parameters, but it depends on your style and what you want to achieve. Let's go ahead and do one more example, and I'm going to actually do this on an arpeggio. We'll listen to the arp. We can see that the velocity is completely the same across the board. The green is staying the same. I want to make this a little bit more interesting, have some more movement. So I'll grab that velocity again. I'm going to drag that onto the wavetable position. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit wider as well by turning up my unison just so it sounds a bit better. And then I will grab the velocity. Let's put it on the cutoff. Bring it just up a little bit and we'll do the resonance. And let's do some panning as well, make it sound a little bit more interesting. But now it sounds too much, so I'm going to go into the sound and the envelope that's actually controlling the cutoff without the velocity. So if I bypass this, we're still using this envelope to open that cutoff, which is making the pluck sound. I'll turn that back on, go back to my envelope too. I'm just going to turn this down a little bit, just so I have more control over what I'm doing with the velocity because then it's not going to be opening up as much because the envelope tool that's controlling it isn't going to be opening it up as much. So okay. But we're still not using the velocity in a way. We're using the velocity tracking to open up that cutoff a little bit because we're sitting at about almost 100, about 96 on here. So we are opening up that cutoff with the velocity tracking but we're not using a random one. So again, we can just use velocity tool. Turn that on, random's up to 24. Let's bring it down a little bit to maybe 17. Let's take a listen.
Let's see what it's doing. Let's turn that cutoff up a little bit more. And you can also automate this by automating the random amount. So we can start off low and go up high. And then one last thing I'll mention is that this is really great for live recording as well, because if you're playing on your MIDI keyboard or you're playing on a machine or something similar, then you're actually not getting the same velocity every single time because we're human. We can't press exactly the same every time. So by recording with a keyboard or something similar, we are recording different velocity amounts, usually all the time. And by setting these velocity tracking parameters on different things, every time we hit that key, every time we hit our, our pad or anything that we're using, then we are creating even more variation. It's even more realistic sounding and even more organic sounding. So let's go ahead and change out that serum for a wavetable. Let's change this ARP here. So basically the same thing, we can turn this into a sawtooth wave. And you're going to want to go into the MIDI and where it says velocity here. So this is actually attenuating the amplitude. So when you hit the key lighter or harder, it's going to attenuate the volume. So when I play this, if I hit it lighter or harder, I can put that up to 100. So when I play it really light, really quiet, and really hard, it's going to be much louder. So that's a really cool way of adding a bit of variation as well. Maybe put that to, you know, 10 or 20. And then we can change the cutoff. So I'll put this down, put that to 24, and then let's do the filter frequency on the velocity up to 100. Cool, right? So even if you don't have serum, you can definitely try this in, uh, in Wavetable as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications on so you get more videos like this one. If you learned something, definitely comment below, let me know, and give me a thumbs up.